In this video, I want to show you the mathematics that Einstein used in one of his papers in 1902. So this came before special relativity and general relativity. But my aim here is to show you that first Einstein had a great mastery of thermodynamics. So we will see some thermodynamics and physics. But at the same time, he had a great mastery of mathematics as well. Even if this came before his theory of special and general relativity. Especially in general relativity, there's a lot of involved mathematics. But also in thermodynamics, there is some kind of not so easy mathematics. So it might be interesting to show you what it did. The paper is called Kinetic Theory of Thermal Equilibrium and the Second Law of Thermodynamics. I'm going to go through the most important formulas in this paper. And I will also show you some steps of how to derive these formulas. And sometime my notation will be slightly different from Einstein's one, but more or less it will be the same. We will consider several coordinates to describe systems. So there are several particles. And in order to describe the systems, we need coordinates. We need for example, n coordinates for position, p1, pn, and we need n coordinates of momentum, q1, qn. At first, Einstein considered the number of systems whose state variables, so these are the state variables, belong to some infinitesimal region that he called lowercase g at a given time. So the number dn of systems in this very small region is equal to some distribution that I will call phi, just like Einstein did, phi of p1 dot 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 pn, then q1 dot 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 qn. So I will rewrite it like this, p1 dot 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 qn. But you know that when I write something like this, I mean these coordinates here, coordinates and momenta. Then we have the small volume, the infinitesimal volume. So I integrate over G here, but this is an infinitesimal volume. So it's an integral over an infinitesimal volume. And this is the notation that Einstein used, integral over G of dP1 dot 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 dQn. Let me repeat it. This is the number of systems whose state variables belong to the region G at a given time, t for example. So it's an infinitesimal quantity. And if the system starts at t equal to zero, then this will be equal to the same function phi. And in here, Einstein used a different set of variables that I will call p1 prime dot 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 qn prime. These are the state variables that describe the system at t equals zero at the initial time. So in principle, we have to integrate over another infinitesimal region, but it might be different. So we call it capital G. And then here we have dP1 prime dot 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 dQn prime. At this point, Einstein made use of the Liouville's theorem, which states that the infinitesimal volumes in phase space, and the infinitesimal volumes are this one and this one, they are equal. So integral over g dp1 dot 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 dqn is equal to integral over g dp1 prime dot 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 dqn prime. And from this, Einstein argued, of course, that this function, which depends on the variable p1 dot 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 qn, is equal to this function which depends on the variable p1 prime, q1 prime. So this function phi does not depend on the variables, but rather it is a function of only the energy of the system. So this is a constant with respect to the variables, but it will depend on the energy of the system. Therefore, Einstein rewrote dn like this. It is some constant with respect to the variables, a times the integral of dp1 dot 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 dqn over g. And then he wrote this as a prime, which is a different constant, times e to the minus 2h times e, where h is a constant. This is a very important constant, and Einstein described this constant in this paper. And we will see more about this constant. It's a very important constant which we will see that it is related to the Boltzmann constant. And then integral over g, dp1 dot 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 dqn. 
And the region G is related to the energy, so we integrate over a very small region whose energy is bounded between the value E and the value E plus some small increment delta E. We are still in an infinitesimal region. Then Einstein considered two systems. One system as energy H, another system as energy E bar. The total energy of the two systems is given by the sum of these two single systems, and Einstein considered H to be much greater than E bar. The number dn for the overall system, which comprises the two systems, were the first system as energy H and the second one as energy E bar. dn is equal to A prime e to the minus 2h E bar for the first system. Then I have dp1 dot 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 dqn. And in this case, I'm not considering the integral sign. This is a very small region. Also, the second system is a small region. And then Einstein integrates e to the minus 2h lowercase h times uppercase h, where in this case, this one is the energy, this one is the constant lowercase h. And then I have other coordinates, d zeta 1 dot 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 dzn, where zeta 1 dot 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 zeta n are the positions. And then I have z1 dot 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 zn, which are the momenta. These are the coordinates of the second system, and the integral is bounded by the fact that the energy starts at some value e minus e bar. This difference is h, remember, from this equation here, to some other value e minus e bar plus some small increment delta e. And Einstein defined this function here as some function chi, which depends on the difference between e and e bar. The integral, of course, depends on this difference. Now, I can expand this in a Taylor series because e bar is very small. So this is approximately equal to chi of e minus e bar times chi prime of e. This is exactly what Einstein did. And then in order for chi of e minus e bar to be a function only of the energy E, we can set chi prime of E equal to zero because E bar is very small. So if we set chi prime of E equal to zero, this difference is even closer to be equal to chi of E because as I said, and as Einstein argued, E bar is very, very small. So chi of E is equal to e to the minus 2h e integral over some very small region d zero one dot 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 dzn and Einstein called this integral here omega of e because it depends on the energy e and then he set chi prime of e equal to zero if we take the derivative of chi of e chi prime of e is equal to e to the minus 2h e omega of e times minus 2h when we take the derivative of the exponential and then we have plus e to the minus 2h e omega prime of e and then now we can set this equal to zero we can solve this equation for h and h is equal to one half omega prime of e divided by omega of e.